Inside of the box, we include a quick start guide, an accessory bag, and the central air controller itself. Inside of the accessory bag, you'll find these Wego lever nuts, the reset pin, and two of these sheet metal screws, although you can use your own if you already have some. You, the install technician, need to have the following tools and parts on hand. A drill with a quarter inch hex bit, wire strippers, and a length of either two, four, or six wire solid conductor cable, depending on how many pieces of equipment you are connecting to and where the wires are running to. The CAC is a low powered product, only using 10 watts during startup and a few watts during operation. It can often be powered by the R and the C terminals from the air handler control board. If you prefer to use a dedicated power supply, you can install a secondary 24 volt inline transformer, or you could use a wall plug transformer. The cam can accept anywhere from nine to 30 volts AC or DC, so you have lots of options when running power. And performing the installation requires you to first create a free account in the Haven Pro Portal or in the Haven IAQ mobile app, which is available in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. You will use the same account to log into both the mobile app and the Pro Portal. When you sign up, you can use any email you want with a password or log in with your existing Facebook, Google, Apple, or LinkedIn account. Please remember which login method you use during sign up to ensure that you can always have access to your personal Haven data and settings. Once you're ready to perform the install, you need to make sure that you have the customer's information on hand, such as their email address, street address, and Wi-Fi information. If you're installing the device for personal use, we recommend that you use the same account that you are using to install the device. To begin the install, open the Haven IQ app on your phone, and from the Haven Pro screen, select Connect a Haven Device. This takes you through the step-by-step -step installation process. Remember that you already have a CAM installed on the account that you're installing the CAC to. So you don't have to put in a new address when you're installing the CAC. You can enter the Wi-Fi information now, or you can wait until you have the CAM powered up. Since Wi-Fi can be spotty at the air handler, such as in a home's basement or in an attic, check the Wi-Fi signal strength from your phone's settings to make sure that the CAC can reliably connect to the internet. And since the CAC is controlled over Wi-Fi, it doesn't have to be installed in close proximity to the CAM but it does mean that you need to make sure that the installation location is within Wi-Fi range. So here's my rule of thumb. Place the CAC on a metal surface with no obstructions facing the Wi-Fi access point. This allows a clear path for the CAC and the Wi-Fi access point to communicate. Now it's time to perform the install. Today, I will just be showing you how to connect the CAC to the G terminal of a central air system. When connecting to an ERV or an HRV, there's often a boost or a high mode input that you can connect to. Humidifiers and dehumidifiers often just have a single switch to enable or disable the humidification or dehumidification, but some devices also allow you to control their blower independently through a secondary input. Please note that the CAC is only designed to switch loads under 30 volts with two amps max current draw. Please do not attempt to use the dry contact outputs to switch 120 volt loads or anything drawing more than two amps. Doing so would cause damage to both the CAC and the HVAC equipment. Now, the first thing we wanna do is to find our mounting location for the CAC. In this house, I know that the Wi-Fi access point is approximately over there. So I'm going to put the CAC either here, here, or even here as they're free of obstructions and generally are facing in the same direction of the Wi-Fi access point. I don't want to install the CAC somewhere like here or in here between these two pieces of ductwork where I can't access it and also the RF signal isn't going to be ideal. Now let's run power to the CAC. If you're adding an inline transformer or using the R and the C terminals in the air handler, first turn off the power to the air handler before making any modifications. Remove the door and locate your power source and do not energize the power until both sides of the circuit are connected. Prepare your length of wire from the power source to the CAC and leave enough length for a service loop. 
Since I'm also controlling the G terminal of the air handler with this CAC, I will be running two pairs of wires, one for power and one for signal. If you're using a knockout hole or making a new hole for the wires, please make sure to add a grommet or cable gland to prevent air from escaping from the hole. Now strip back two inches of the cable jacket and one inch from the wire insulation to prep the connection to the power source. Here you can either use the Wego lever nuts and splice the cam power into the 24 volt transformer low side, or if you're planning to use the R and the C for power, you can directly connect to the terminals like you would a thermostat. For controlling the blower, you need to add a wire to the G terminal and another wire to the R terminal. The Wego nuts are especially useful if you have more than one device already connected to the control board terminals, such as with the cam you already installed. After connecting the power source, on the CAC side of the wire, strip back two inches of jacket and a half inch of insulation. Now insert the exposed wires into the power terminals on the bottom of the device. You can either use a small slotted screwdriver or the reset pin to depress the terminals to make it easier to connect the wires. The power input is reversible, so don't worry about which wire goes into which hole, as long as it's the color pair that was assigned to the power terminals on the control board. If you are only using one output on the CAC, please connect your signal wires to terminal one. You can add a second control circuit to terminal two if you're controlling two pieces of equipment with one CAC. Make sure the wires are fully inserted by giving them a quick pull test. Once you have your CAC installed and you've double checked your wiring, now's the time to put your door back on and to turn the system back on as well. When you power up the CAC or the CAM for the first time, their lights are blue, which just means that it's ready for provisioning. Now that the system's back on, let's provision your central air controller with your Haven IQ app. In the Haven IQ app, follow the prompts to complete the install, including entering in your customer's information if you haven't done so already. During setup, you'll be asked to select a CAM to associate with your CAC. As long as you're using the same account and address for this install as you used with the CAM install, this CAM will show up on your list. If this CAC is for personal use, then select personal use program in the deployment type. The other three selections, sale to homeowner, short-term investigation, and service contract are used when you install the CAM in a customer's home. Now you'll be asked to configure terminal one. The CAM was pre-configured with a zone and an air handler during the original installation, which is what will be shown in the equipment setup. If you're connecting the CAC to the G terminal on your air handler, like I did, then select the air handler associated with your CAM. If you're connecting the CAC to a different piece of equipment, select set up new equipment and select the template you want to use. For these air handler automations, it'll tell you that a blower schedule will be enabled, which will turn on the blower intermittently throughout the day to ensure that there's airflow. In the control step in the installation workflow, it will ask you what cam measurements should be used to activate the output. What you get shown here depends on the equipment template you used. For example, if you use central air system that has a filter rated at MERV 11 or higher, you should select PM 2.5 as your measurement for the automation. You can set the automation threshold to either fair or poor, depending on how sensitive the occupants are to IQ issues. And if you want to know what the fair and the poor thresholds are, it'll tell you right there in the app. Setting the automation to trigger on fair is appropriate for sensitive individuals, but most homes should be fine with the automation threshold set to poor. If you are also connecting a second piece of equipment, please repeat the setup steps in the app for the second terminal as well. Otherwise, skip terminal two. The next step is to connect to the CAC from your phone, so you need to make sure that you have Bluetooth turned on. The app will attempt to connect to the CAC over Bluetooth, and then it will take you through a test sequence of the equipment that you are connected to. If the equipment doesn't turn on during the 15 second test, please check your wiring and try again. And finally, you will connect the CAC to Wi-Fi. Make sure you type in the network name and the password properly, and the CAC should start blinking blue. And then you know that it's online once it goes solid green. Inside the app, it's going to ask you to confirm the LED colors to make sure that uh, it is installed properly.